Hey, everybody. This is just like one of the most fun episodes I've had. On to, just let's start that over. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> All right, ready, set, go. Okay. Hey, everybody. On this week's episode of Whiskey Neat with your host, Christopher Hart, I sit down with the distillery manager of Brooklady, Alan Logan, and Erica. <laughs> um, I've been a, an Isla fan. I've been preaching the good word of Pete for, God, five years now, which is a long time in my whiskey journey. I've been a huge fan since the very beginning. Everyone has heard my story of how I started with Laphroaig, and uh, I'm sure I've mentioned my wife and I's trip to uh, Isla a few years ago. It's just one of my absolute favorite parts of this whiskey journey is the peated realm of deliciousness that is Isla whiskey. And uh, just being able to sit down with with you guys has been an absolute blast. So um, we sit down, we talk everything that brooklady has been doing. I mean, they are the progressive Hebridean distillery on Isla. I got it right the first time. You guys have been doing and experimenting, I mean, with every possible scenario when it comes to whiskey. So this episode was a complete nerd out for me. I was extremely honored to have you both here, and it was just amazing. So this episode is sponsored by Brook Laddie, uh, but I, every word I'm saying is absolute truth. I mean, we, we, I've been, again, I've been talking about you guys for a long time. So um, I think that's pretty much everything. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what's that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never mentioned this. Um, make sure we get a photo together. Every episode of Whiskey Neat can be found on Facebook, which is our number one platform, as well as iTunes, Google Play, the whole nine yards. So you can visit our website at mywhiskeyneat.com. You can visit us on Twitter at mywhiskeyneat. People say, why my, my whiskey neat? Because I like my whiskey neat, right? I like this clean, fresh and straight from the barrel. And we talk about that. Brook Laddie, non-chill filtered, higher proof, just boom a raw product so huge fan and this was this is a fun episode thank you guys for being thank here you. and well we're gonna to cheers for the here. fifth time but i'm happy for it cheers guys welcome to the show yeah well thanks thank for having you. us thank you so much thank you for having Erica, us absolutely, absolutely. no Pleasure i appreciate it here, yeah. i'm super honored and and you, the distillery manager for for brook laddie it's uh it's a big title, yeah. and I think we're the same age. Yeah. Uh, how old are you? I'm 38. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I I remember reading that yeah. you had took over when you were. So we're not the same age. Yeah. I'm a little younger, but oh, okay. uh, I remember hearing that you took over when you were 28 or 29. Yeah, that's right. But I was, yeah, I took over the 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 role as distillery manager yeah, when I was 20, just 20, turned 28. Yeah. So, Absolutely yeah, incredible. That's almost 10 years. It's hard to believe. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's uh, I've worked at Brooklady for uh, almost 18 years now. So when it reopened in 2001. I was fortunate enough to start my career off in the industry at the age of 19 uh, in, the, in the in the distillery, and I uh, uh, I grew up on Isla. I was born in on the island, and I, my family had been working in the whiskey industry for uh, a couple of generations before me. Uh, Elok, right? And Elok, yeah, 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 born and bred, yeah. That's my American pronunciation. Yeah. That's and what they call natives yeah. of Isla. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> yeah, my father worked at Lafroig. Uh, he was uh, a distiller at Lafroig. And we actually lived at the distillery when I was growing up. So being in the industry and uh, being around the industry when I was growing up as a kid and uh, really, you know, I, I love um, everybody, my uncles, my my brother even got into the industry and I knew it uh, when I left school, that's what I wanted to do. And uh, yeah, I was lucky enough to get started at Brooklady and I've been there ever since. <clears throat> My love for Isla goes back, like I said, from the very beginning. I wanted to name uh, I have four kids and the youngest daughter. Uh, I have a tremendous Scotch and Irish history. I wanted to name her Isla. Okay, yeah. We and, know a couple Islas. Yeah, yeah and the moment, uh, the moment my wife realized that it was tied to whiskey, she she put the kibosh, <laughs> kibosh. on it. Yeah. So, um, but so we yeah. went with Nora, yeah, okay. which is also a nice yeah. a nice yeah. older name. Um, but I just I, I yeah. love the island. We we spent a week there, uh, a few days there, uh, a few years back. We stayed in a cottage in uh, in mm. uh, uh, Port Ellen. Okay, mm -hmm. and we the the place is just a serene and it's pretty massive too. It, it's very small, but at the same time, uh, getting from one end of the island to the other. Uh, it was just incredibly uh, difficult because yeah, the the taxi service it was called like you know Jennifer's taxi service and it was really just Jennifer <laughs> and her van it was it was like the the 
It was like Uber before Uber was yeah. a yeah. thing. Right, yeah. Call them up. And yeah. I think we invented Uber, I think. You know, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You are before, the beginner. Yeah. Before it was called <laughs> yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> and when we tried to get to, uh, you know, we tried to go on tours and we couldn't get uh, the taxi service to take us mm. because yeah, yeah. she was on the other side of the yeah, island. That's yeah. Right, yeah. So we had to walk. Yeah. And we, and it was, I was so glad we did because it was probably the most peaceful. Mm. Uh, the weather was perfect, yeah. right? 50 degrees, which yep. for us is like, yeah. you know, amazing. And uh, it was just incredible. And it was one of the best experiences we've ever had in Scotland. And we spent a long time there and we, we absolutely loved it. So yeah. you had a heat wave this year. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we were. Um, What's a heat wave? Well, for us, it's, it's, you know, probably 70, between 70 and 80. 75 here. Yeah. Do, you, do you sweat? Like, yeah, is yeah, that we a, do. Yeah, that's yeah at it. 70 degrees, you sweat? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah that's For us, oh, Lord. it's like. Then this we room must be like a yeah. thousand <laughs> degrees to you because it's hot in here. So, yeah, we're burning up. Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, this year has been a, an exceptional year where we've had a, a, a drought. We had uh, almost um, six weeks of uh, no rain and, you know, it was in the kind of 20s, mm -hmm. you know, up, well, and, and centigrade, it was about between 20 and 30. So that'll be between 70 and 80. So getting into living there, you know, you being an Elik, uh, an, an island native, um, if I'm s still pronouncing that right. Yep. Um, you, it, it might to understand is that there were no trees on the island, which is where peat came from, is mm -hmm. because they didn't have any firewood. They had to switch to uh, an alternative. And then, of course, the, lo and behold, the island is full of mm. uh, beautiful, abundant peat. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? Yeah. So, the, I mean, the, there is trees now, um, but back probably 100, 200 years ago, there was very little trees. Um, and yeah, the, the, you're correct in saying that the, the, the peat is there. The, we're, we're, we're super rich in peat. Uh, the land this, uh, is made up of peat and they use that uh, back uh, in the 1700s and 1800s when they were started making um, whiskey on Isla. They were using the peat as a source of fuel to dry the malted barley. So we're fortunate that even today, after you know 100, 200 years of still using peat, there's still lots of peat on the island that is harvested for uh, using for drying the malted barley, and that incidentally is actually giving a flavour, that smoky character to the the whisky when they're um, and and intentionally uh, when they started using it, it wasn't intentionally to add flavour to the malt. Uh, it was actually just used as a source of fuel uh, right. to dry the barley. But a happy a, accident. Yeah, happy accident. It was Lock and Doll Distillery, right? That was yeah, essentially there was, doing that. Yeah, there was Lock and Doll. Yeah. Uh, was on the Rins, and there was also uh, like the other distilleries, like Bomore, mm -hmm. uh, Lafroy. I think Bomore is the oldest dist distillery on the island. It was built in the the 1700s, and uh, they were using peat right back then as well. And uh, you know, today all the island distilleries are using peat. Uh, in one way, shape, or form, to to dry their malted barley. So at Brickladdy, we don't uh, smoke all our barley. Uh, so um, Brickladdy is unpeated. So there's no uh, peat used to dry the barley for Brickladdy whiskies. For those that, uh, just to clarify here, there are a line that specifically say Brickladdy in big bold letters on the uh, still on the yeah, cancer. Yeah. yeah, and that's a key indication that it's not peated. Yeah. Uh, that being said, you guys also hit the other end of the spectrum too. Mm. That's right. Yeah. So Port Charlotte, which we're going to take we today, Chris, is the uh, that are heavily peated. That's uh, uh, typically an Isla single malt. That's you know really uh, it's heavily peated, and then we have Octomore, which is the most heavily peated whiskey in the world. Uh, absolutely yeah. huge fan. Yeah. Octomore is a big winner here. Yeah, mm -hmm. the the group. Uh, I, I run a local group. I don't know if you're in that one. Are you in HBS? Mm -hmm. The mayhem that is HBS. Yeah, I usually. You know, M mute it. Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> just kind of check in when you yeah. see Brooke Lottie yeah, show up. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I don't blame you. But the, <laughs> Love uh, the you guys seriously. The, the, <laughs> the group that we that I help run here locally is, and I've said this a thousand times, is it's the largest single market group in the nation of you know four thousand members. We see about uh, sixty to eighty new members a week, and it's just growing exponentially. And uh, we do a lot of uh, cask purchases where yeah. we mm -hmm. will buy a barrel okay. of something, and um, we we've we've started branching out and doing. Um, uh, non-bourbon, right? We've started doing scotch, uh, rum. Uh, we're actually buying two casks of Armagnac. The group is is just hungry yeah. to branch out a little bit. The one thing I've always been nervous about is uh, doing a peated whiskey for the group mm. to make sure that we c we can yeah. sell the whole thing, right? Yeah, sure. So, uh, and there is a, a ton of interest in, in both Brook and um, and uh, Lafroy. Yeah. And um, I, I'm, you know, Signatory does the their cask series where you can buy individual casks. 
you can't really taste them beforehand. They yeah. just kind of send them to you. Um, you pick off a menu. Brook Laddie is something that if you guys ever do a barrel program, please let yeah, me know. Because yeah. essentially, I mean, realistically, yeah. you're selling them yeah. by the the dozens of cases as yeah, opposed to, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. And we, I think this year we're doing something like 30 barrels. So yeah. nice. um, well, uh, a awesome. big fat barrel of, oh. of Isla Scotch sounds is, <laughs> yeah. sounds very uh, <laughs> enticing. Yeah, you well, know? I'll store that up here and I'll keep it in mind, yeah. <laughs> Have you guys ever considered doing a barrel program? Yeah, so it, actually we, we did a barrel program from 2001 right up till 2010, 2011. Um, and it was really when we reopened the distillery where we were uh, – you know, a young independent business, and we needed. Uh, we sold barrels, and and being honest, we were doing it as a source as of a income. revenue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think over that period, over that ten years, we sold maybe about three thousand barrels to. But we were selling it as uh, new make spirit, so they were obviously buying it as new make and then having to age it oh, in our bonds, yeah. and then they could obviously bottle it. When, and they still, we still have their barrels sitting in our warehouses that they can draw off at any time. Yeah, sure, uh, sure. Yeah, but yeah, it's something we've um, we don't do it th- this time. You know, it's um, we you know we've been very careful that trying to you know build the brand, and you know if we we start releasing. Uh, uh, barrels that will um, suddenly some lose the focus on our brand and maybe Your core the, brand, yeah, yeah, yeah the core brand and 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 we're just in this um, infancy of trying to build the brand and maybe sometime in the future when the brand's you know uh, bigger and p- more people recognize it then we will maybe you know open up programs like this but at this stage we don't want to to suddenly start to distract from you know what we're trying to sure. the message we're trying to send across because it's taken a long time for us to to build up our, our dream and our philosophy sure and, and we want you know people to understand what we're doing so yeah so i'm pretty sure if you like go and tour the distillery and you just put your name on a cast they'll be happy to just give it to you yeah yeah <laughs> Well, we sure uh, yeah, that's a, yeah. <laughs> Our first trip down there, we we made it to the Port Allen side, and we 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 want to hit the north and the and the Port Charlotte side. Um, we just, I mean, the last couple of years of the way things have grown, we, yeah. we've been here, right, yeah. and we're dying. So our first family vacation uh, this year, in three years, will, will happen this year, and then we have plans to to go back soon. So um, I'm just, I, I mean, I, I try not to to come off as too much of a sales pitch when I do these shows. I, I'm just a huge fan of of Brook Laddie, and you guys, uh, I'm so excited to try these. So let me yeah. get through this, but I definitely tell me. So what? Tell this me what's going on here besides the new packaging. Um, are you guys? Are you guys uh, just doing the, like what's being released now? Yeah. That's one. Okay. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Both, so two I'll, ones. I can yeah, yeah. explain. Why well, I figured they were two different. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So today we've got the Port Charlotte ten year old and we've got the Port Charlotte two thousand eleven uh, Isla Barley, um, and for the last four or five years that we've had Port Charlotte Scottish Barley as our main Port Charlotte skew. Uh, and we've really been trying to build up the stocks because we only started making Port Charlotte in 2001 when we reopened the distillery. Um, this was the, a new whiskey that we had. Uh, we decided to make a heavily peated whiskey in Brooklady. How heavy? So it's 40 parts per million. And um, we um, we started distilling this for the very first time in 2001. And as I said, about four or five years ago, we... Um, we launched the Port Charlotte Scottish Barley as an introduction of the Port Charlotte range to the, the market. Um, but in the meantime, we've been building up the stocks and we're now at a stage where we've got enough stocks to do a kind of global allocation of Port Charlotte as a 10 year old. And we really want to, um, you know, contend with the rest of the Isle of Whiskies because, you know, we feel that we, we are with Brooklady, but we're more, the style of Brooklady whiskey is, is, is an unpeated. It's more in, in line with some of the space side whiskies because sure. they're unpeated. Whereas with Isla whiskies, you know, people know our bag, Lafroig has been smoky and, you know, always really smoky, rich, yeah. right? They don't really have an Yeah, unpeated. so that's exactly what Prochala is. It's a heavily peated whiskey. It's 40 parts per million. It's the same phenol content as Lafroig and Lagavulin. Oh. But we distill it in a way that we're, <laughs> We're distilling very slowly and trying to get a balance of uh, the flavor. We're sacrificing some of the higher alcohols during the distillation to get a balanced smoky flavor that also speaks more of the distillery, but also um, has influence from the cask as well. And um, we're, we're super proud of Pochala as, as a brand and we're relaunching now as a 10 year old, as I said, the packaging uh, we've uh, 
we've uh, decided to to repack and go for a dark green bottle. Uh, so Lefroy Garbeg goes recognised. So I think naturally people instinct when they see a dark green bottle, they know it's maybe you know heavily peated whiskey, and that's what we're um, why we decided to to go for the dark green pack. And yeah, it's um, it's bottled at fifty percent, so we naturally leave it at higher ABV. Uh, it's non chill filtered. Hence the reason it's higher strength, but also at fifty percent, we feel that it carries more of the oils. It, it's a it's better balance of flavor at fifty percent. What I've always understood, and, and this may not be uh, the whole story, or it may either be completely inaccurate, or maybe just part of the story. But uh, my understanding, a big part of a lot of whiskeys, um, controversially speaking, is the addition of E one fifty A caramel coloring. Yeah, and I've always been told that a lot of Isla distilleries. Uh, try to avoid that, and by and by and what happens is the perception of the average consumer when they see a bottle on the shelf and they see a darker whiskey, they automatically assume a better product. Yeah. So by putting it in a green glass removes yeah. that, and I say ignorance merely out of not knowing any better, not out of yeah. disrespect, but um, by removing that hindrance. Yeah. They can just take it based off the the label, which they should because the label itself is going to tell you all the important stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. So a bump in proof, non-chill filtered, all the, you know, sometimes an age statement, sometimes yeah. not. Uh, these are all things that uh, are key indications of a little bit more effort put behind the expression as opposed to just throwing some caramel coloring in there. Not that yeah. there's anything wrong with it. Yeah. Um, there are plenty of great, I had a 50-year-old whiskey that I'm sure you could guess uh, that that had the addition of E158, and it was yeah. still absolutely stunning. Yeah. Um, but it's just the, this this common misconception because you're always that's the biggest part of any brand building is you're always fighting against um, ignorance. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And uh, so the green bottle traditionally a uh, big part of Isla's history, Lafroy, Lagavulin, uh, Ardbeg, all green bottles. So you take it exactly for what it is. Um, without any kind of preconceived guesses or assumptions beforehand. Yeah. Um. And this nose, the other thing I wanted to say is the nose on this is absolutely stunning. Yeah, it's, so uh, it's everything I want in a peated whiskey is that, yeah. that beautiful yeah. nose. This old expression is, I, yeah. I think it's fantastic. It is. But the nose on yes, this is yeah. just blowing me away. Yeah, well, we've carefully selected, you know, as I said, we've we've saved up uh, our stocks and to have enough to, to do a 10-year-old launch. But um, we've carefully selected the right balance of casks. Uh, we use 75% of uh, American bourbon casks and 25% of the casks that we've selected for the Charlotte 10-year-old is uh, French uh, European wine casks. But with a, di a few different chateaus in there, so we've got some fruit, mm -hmm. but some sweet wines as well, and just getting that balance of flavour. And it works well with the, the peats, you know, trying to get the sweets uh, to integrate with the, the oak and the, the peat smoke as well. And we're finding with Port Charlotte, it really, you know, adapts well uh, with different ageing profiles. You know, even in sherry, it comes through really well. Uh, we're quite excited. In a couple of months' time, we're going to release a Port Charlotte um, cask edition, which has uh, been matured. Uh, well, finished off in one year in Mouton Rothschild casks, and it's 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 very special. Yeah, it's uh, it's got a real fruity, uh, rich you know kind of cherry, uh, rich uh, fruit. A lot of those, dark fruits. Yeah, dark fruits. Yeah, and it's um you know Charlotte, You know, even with it being heavily peated, it works really well with that fruit coming through on the on the palate and the nose as well. Uh, absolutely stunning, and I'm so excited. I mean, forty parts per million. It's definitely. I think a lot of people. <clears throat> They assume sometimes that with a higher PPM, uh, parts per million of, of peat, of phenolic mm. content, you you assume a um, a much more aggressive yeah. uh, peat, but it's not yeah. always the case. I yeah. mean, there's there's a sweetness to this that's just, uh, and it's yeah. all ex bourbon first fill. Or, yeah, or first you, fill years. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and yeah, uh, I mean, there's a couple of elements that we do to try and balance it, and it, it right, starts right back at we get malt at forty parts per million. And the first stage of uh, we we start to um, is that the distillation. You know, we're we're um, we're very um, mindful of the way that we distill. If we if we distill too aggressively, then we get a lot of the higher alcohols coming through, and we get the the, the high phenols. Um, but we choose to sacrifice some of the phenols during distillation to try and tame it down a little bit to get more of the sweeter elements coming through of the malted barley um, that also help complement, you know, during the aging, you get that sweetness as well. So all the sweetness that you're tasting is not all just coming from the, the aging process. It's coming, some of it's coming from the malt because 
I'm going to get a bit technical here and hopefully I don't get too carried away, but during the distillation, we will um, we distill slowly to get more uh, effect from the copper pot still, more of the reflux, so it's purifying it and that's sacrificing, you know, dur- the sacrificing some of the phenols during the distillation that is... Um, making it less yeah, smoky. making it lighter, uh, lighter spirit and less smokier. And the... That then allows the flavours of the malt and the sweet uh, sweetness to come through uh, in the spirit. So it starts off there, and then obviously the aging process. We age all our barrels on Isla, so we do get subtle influences coming from the the maritime influence because our warehouses are literally right a stone throw away from the sea. Mm-hmm. Where we're Isla's located on the the edge of the Atlantic Ocean, so we get you know we're windswept by the the Atlantic Ocean, and we get that salty spray coming across the the warehouses. So we get that salty, tangy uh, um, note that comes through in all our whiskies. Uh, so that influence is there, but um, the cask as well. It's obviously, you know, using bourbon cask, it gives an element of sweetness. So, uh, and then using some of the French wine casks we get, we can get a balance of oak and some more sweetness uh, coming from some of the sweet wines we use. Yep. Is the is the traditional proof of the Port Charlotte line around 100 proof? Yeah. It's always yeah, been that right, way? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's extremely uh, bold. I mean, yeah. it's something that um, you, you, you know, traditionally, I mentioned this a, a few minutes ago that... Uh, a bump in proof is a is a traditionally a lot of whiskies, whether it's bourbon or scotch, will always cut something down to eighty yeah. proof, the minimum required, mm-hmm. because it maximizes profit. So the idea that a distillery puts something out that's not the minimum yeah. means that they are sacrificing fin- financial interest yeah. for quality. Quality, yeah. And it's something that uh, you know, I'm sure you've heard of Ralphie. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Ralphie was was the first uh reviewer that I yeah. watched on YouTube when yeah. I was learning about Scotch. I would listen to Ralphie incessantly. Yeah. And uh and that's one of the things he says. So one of the th- the three indicators uh that you can usually check for on a label right off the bat as a sign of uh you know, before even tasting something is a bump in proof, uh uh, uh, uh Natural, uh, natural coloring, coloring yeah. and uh, what was the other one? Oh, it's been it's been that yeah. long since I've I've listened yeah. to it. There's three. Yeah, it's a uh, bump and proof. Chill filtering. Chill, chill filtering. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So non-chill filtering, leaving all those natural oils in there, uh, is something that uh, it's just it's awesome. Yeah, like just yeah. just did you pick? Did you hear that bump? Yeah, sorry. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, so, I'm still yeah. with this guy. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, so we we know Ralphie very well. Uh, so yeah, he's um, Ralphie. I've came, never met him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He came to the Whiskey Academy. So we ran a program again back in maybe between 2005 and 2010. We ran a program where Oops, we done the I know you heard that. the uh, academy program uh, that was allowing. Uh, Consumers, you know, uh, interested whiskey enthusiasts to come to the distillery. They would work with us for a week um, at, and stay at the distillery, and um, they would learn the, the the a bit more in detail about you know what we were doing at the distillery and how we make our whiskey and you know the differences. And so Ralph, he was uh, yeah, he came and we spent a week with him, and he came back and visited a few times. So yeah, I know Ralphie pretty well. I haven't seen him in a couple of years, but yeah, um, and yeah, just exactly as you say, I think the. Fifty uh, percent. There's a couple of reasons uh, that we bottle at fifty percent. Now, the non-chill filtration is is the 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 first element that we don't chill filter any of our single malts. Uh, we believe that you age your whiskey for however many years. You know, in this uh, instance, it's ten years. The, the poor Charlotte's been in the cask. And during that ten years, the whiskey is extracting all these flavors and oils and tannins from the the oak, and that's what's carrying the flavor. And it's all the, the, it carries it um, through in the whiskey. Now, um, it's all held together. The molecules are held together, and we call them like the natural oils. It's commonly that's what we will say: the natural oils in the whiskey, and they're held together. Now. If you chill filter your whiskey, what you're doing is you're reducing the temperature of your whiskey before bottling and you're extracting these oils to allow you to add more water to bring it down to 40%. Now, there's we have to compromise because we leave the oils in. Uh, so we have we can't go below 46% because if what happens is when you dilute it down, when you add water and it comes down to below 46, there's a reaction between the oil and the water. 
and it starts to turn the whiskey hazy. Highland haze or highland yeah, mist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a, right. there's yeah. a ton yeah. of terms yeah. for yeah, it. Right, yeah. But essentially, it's cloudiness in, yeah. the, in the bottle. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. It goes and uh, again, going back to the average consumer, when you see a milky looking. Yeah. Yeah. They think something's wrong with they it. They think something's yeah. wrong yeah. with yeah. it. Yeah. So, and it's not just the consumer. It's yeah. also no, it's, liquor yeah. stores and distributors. Putting yeah. ice in it or anything, people immediately think it's something. So we choose not to do that. So naturally, we could bottle it 46% without taking the oils out. So we could bottle it 46 But we actually choose to go 50% because we feel the, the, the flavors are held together better at 50%. Sure. It's a better uh, carrying of the um, the flavors. And it's, you know, for us, it, it leaves that oily texture. It gives that long finish on the whiskey. And if you were, you know, we could add more water, but then it would mean that the, the taste would be a little faster in the, in the finish. So um, for us, yeah, we're we're sacrificing that. It's financially, you know, it's something we, we sacrifice. But again, for us, it's more about the quality and we want people to have the experience. Now, we often talk, say to, to people, if you try it at 50 and they feel it's still too strong, you know, add a little bit of water and soften it up. You know, don't, it's easier to add water, but you it's can't It's easier to go back. down. Yeah, yeah I tell people yeah. all the time that there's, yeah. um, you know, country time lemonade. Yeah, with powdered lemonade. Yeah. I'd much rather buy that yeah. and add my own water yeah. than to buy yeah. pre-mixed and yeah. it'd be too weak. Yes, because right. you can't go back. Yeah, that's right. right. You yeah. can't make it stronger. Once I'm gonna it's use done. that for every tasting. Yeah. I, I'm telling. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of that, how many how many tastings have you got? How long are you in town for? Just today in in uh, Houston, we were in Dallas yesterday. He flew in the night before that. You're and just then, going nonstop. Yep, yeah. we're back to back. And You're then tomorrow, like a dog. Yeah. tomorrow yeah. is Austin, and then we finish Austin Friday night at Whiskey X. Yeah, and then he heads off. Back After to that. yep, yeah. That's uh, it, one thing I've I've learned is that the poor souls that have to travel around the world uh, are run like uh, Eddie Russell from Wild Turkey, uh, Japan, Europe. I mean, just boom, boom, boom. And there's there's no uh, and you're drinking the whole time too, yeah, right? Like, right, is yeah. this your first drink of the day? No, uh, yeah, we've had three, <laughs> four whiskeys already. Yeah, 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 and a cocktail. We're doing well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you, I mean, it's it's you know you you work too much and you, the day is much longer than you think. It's it's really not that hard to to hit two or three, and, and it's like you know like two o'clock now, three o'clock. Um, and, and Isla, it, and Isla, it's night, so go ahead. Yeah, it's almost ten it. o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> Are you, so you're still shaking off the jet lag a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, I, I get in about six, seven hours sleep. So I'm yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, six is nice oh man yeah, yeah. we have uh we have a bunch of babies at home so six uh, yeah. is not uh six is not an option <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. six hours would be phenomenal yeah. F- five's a, yeah. a lucky night so okay um i want to try the next one isla yeah. barley 2011 so yeah, I, sure. I typically could try to, to stretch these out yeah. over a few segments but um yeah. uh this looks too good not to touch so sorry i didn't reopen it no it's okay <laughs> it's okay What's the uh, reasonable shelf price we're looking for the Port Charlotte series? We're coming in probably low 60s here. That's nothing. A couple dollars That's over what nothing. you're, you know, maybe getting. But for quality, I totally think it's great. I had lunch with John Campbell of Lafroy okay. a few months back, and we had a discussion about, uh, about bourbon, right? So uh, for years, scotch was a rich man's game for yeah. a lot of Americans. Yeah. Just the idea that... You, that things are inherently more expensive because you have to deal with import tax and then, yeah. you know, another three tier system to go through. So what happens if you want a good 12 year old scotch, it's going to run you 70 bucks. Yeah. Right. And now you go overseas and it's, you know, 40 bucks or yeah. whatever, 40 euros. Yeah. Um, but bourbon has become such a big boom right. and they're capitalizing on the secondary market. Are you familiar with the secondary market? No. So there's a black market on Facebook okay. for, and this is not news. I'm not going to be yeah. bust. I'm not going to be breaking <laughs> any news here. No one listens to this, anyways. But um, there's a, a a there's European releases yeah. stuff you can't get here in America. Stuff you can only get in certain states. Okay. Some stuff you can only get in certain countries. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a whole world, and you're familiar with it, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, with uh, with Facebook where people will buy and sell and trade and ship and blah blah blah. And the problem is, is secondary uh, groups cause secondary prices, mm-hmm. right? So if you want to get, it. if you want to get something you can't get, oh, okay, yeah, you know, yeah, you're going to yeah. pay a premium for it. Yeah, sure. And a lot of these distilleries, American distilleries, have been uh, are well aware of these groups okay. and will actually gauge pricing for releases based okay. off. Yeah. So there are some distilleries releasing a ten year old whiskey for 140 bucks right, or okay. 150 bucks. Yeah, okay. Um, some of them are completely non-age stated whiskeys yeah, okay. with very young stuff. Uh, it's it's completely illegal, but yeah. the, the distillers are using it as like a marketing focus to kind of gauge. And um, there was a point to this, I promise. But uh, oh, 
Um, <clears throat> scotch has stayed consistent. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Um, the fact that you can now get a quality, uh, hundred proof, non chill filtered awesome you know whiskey scotch yeah. for 60 bucks low yeah. 60s is yeah. ph- phenomenal yeah. um i mean not to knock any other isla distillers but there are some some no age stated whiskeys that yeah. that start off at 120 yeah, right? That's right yeah sure. so um it's nice to just yeah. have a great peat bomb yeah you know for a reasonable yeah. price yeah uh, and then of course you've got now have this gorgeous packaging which which will look great on the back bar i don't yeah. i don't care who's uh, I know Reserve 101 is a huge Scotch bar here they in Houston. Are. So, have yeah. you guys visited there yet? We he haven't. has not been, yeah. but it's I I go there quite what, a bit. What are y'all doing after this? Uh, we are going to B and B Butcher. Yeah, great stop. Yep. Tell Jeremiah and I. I will for sure. He is going to probably pick Alan's brain until he's sideways. I'm mm. sure. But Jeremiah is incredibly intelligent. We love him though. Yeah, he's yeah. a great guy. And then we're off to UB Preserve after that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, you know, I've, I've I've heard of Chris Stewart. Yep. I've heard of Underbelly. And I've had two thirds of the Houston Bourbon Consortium on here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, Kevin, I always forget if it's Flood or Floyd. Uh, Kevin Floyd, and um, and uh, uh, Morgan Weber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I want to get Chris Stewart in here. He's a, he's a bit of a celebrity, so it's okay. it's like well, you know you want to come hang out and record in my little studio here, yeah. you know. So, but uh, there inc- there's this incredible blossoming whiskey scene here that yeah. is just. Um, for years, the focus has always been bars. Yeah. And now it's, it goes way beyond that. Yeah. It's incredible yeah. here. Yeah. And just to be able to sit down and and, and talk to you yeah. on this little show is yeah. like a huge honor for me. Yeah. So I, I really appreciate it. And I'm, again, going back to my first love of whiskey was, was Isla Whiskey's. This is just incredible. So yeah. I'm going to give you a quick cheers. Absolutely. Cheers, cheers. Absolutely. cheers to you. Absolutely. Yeah. I know my cheers. wife's going to love this episode. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's one of the um, we, the the distinct uh, unique things that about the, the new pack is that we've went for a wider neck and the cork, and it gives a really loud pop. It's good. Company, uh, it's important yeah. aesthetic. Yeah, yeah that's going right. back to you know, yeah. let's get. Are we recording? Yeah, yeah. So going back to the whole, uh, there's all these things you have to consider. You can't just be a whiskey nerd, right? Yeah, that's right. You've yeah. been doing this a long time. Yep, yeah. almost twenty years. Yep, yeah. and uh, you can't just make a good product you have to consider all these things that have you know it's same thing with politics you can't just be a good guy yeah that's right yeah and you've got to be mindful of the the consumer are you guys using synthetics or is this a court no this is a natural court natural court court, i actually don't have i I know there's a a whole movement for screw tops but i actually i like uh both synthetic and and, and natural corks i I have no yeah i think there's something about the pop you know of course sure when you open a bottle we've done this on the show where we'll yeah. We'll pop it open right <laughs> yeah. there on the mic. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, what you're drinking is the uh, Isla Barley 2011. It's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I'm going to, I'm just going to. I don't know if you know, but, you know, we're, mm. um, we've, we've been running a, a program where we're buying, uh, or we're growing as much barley as we can on the island. Uh, so, we now are up to about 40% of our barley uh, is grown locally on Isla. We have a bit, uh, well, today, uh, in 2018, we have 19 farms growing barley for us on the island. And I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah. what's the, I think the standard for most of the islands, much less, correct? I think. Yeah, well, it's it's not common. Uh, I mean, ourselves in Kilhoman are the only two that are growing barley actively on island to, to for, for some I'm a big Kilhoman yeah. fan, yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Gary Clark's yeah. the local guy. Yeah. Huge fan of Kilhoman. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, they're getting, doing good stuff. And yeah, we've, uh, we have uh, huge respect because they're, you know, they're they're growing barley on Isla, but they're doing it in the right way. You know, they're focusing on, you know, uh, local and provenance, and you know, doing it um, in a way. So yeah, um, we have nineteen farms working with us as partners. They're growing different varieties of barley uh, on Isla. We have some on the coast, you know, so we uh, the right the fields are literally like a stone throw away from the sea, so that also helps with that maritime influence because the soil is very sandy and salty, you know, being so close to the sea. And some of the farms are more inland, you know, they're uh, in richer soil, which is more like clay and earthy. And um, for us, it's a it's an exploration of studying like these farms in a small island of Isla and actually seeing the nuances, the difference of the soil types, and the, each year we see variations in the weather and that imparts on the flavor as well so the program we've been doing right back since 2003 where we started uh, sorry 2004 we started growing barley on isla 
and we started with one farm and, and as I say today we're up at 19 and each year uh, we select uh, uh, whiskey from different farms and we create a, a, a single vintage but multi-farm because the, the quantities of the the barley that we're getting from each farm doesn't uh, allow us to do single estate at this time. So we're we're really working on uh, multiple farms. So we blend the, the whiskey together. And uh, this in this particular one, we've got three farms from Isla uh, that have grown barley. So this has actually got an age statement on it, but it's... Uh... Yeah, it's a vintage. So we, we deal... It's it's um, because of the program, we do it as a vintage because it's each year because it's, it, it resonates with, um, you know, like in wine, you talk about the vintages and sure. we're we're talking about like barley as in like, you know, we're, we're telling the story. The seasons and the, season, the terroir. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so each year yeah. will be different. Yeah, that's it. So, you, we're, you know, you're... You can remember the the years where you know it was a good harvest or a bad harvest, and you know we've seen in the last uh, almost fourteen years since we've been start since we've been growing barley, um, we've seen you know the the years change and the, it has an, an effect. You know this year we've you know, we talked about it earlier we had a a heat wave in Scotland, you know, it was a drought and that affected the barley. Actually, you know, the, the, the warm spill came early. By on. the way, we would call, we yeah. here in yeah. Houston, we'd call oh, well, that a, oh, a, a welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we would call it a blizzard. Like yeah, it would yeah. be the exact opposite, yeah. like you well, know, 70 yes, degrees yeah. would just yeah. be incredible. Yeah. Well, for us not to get rain for six weeks is, is unusual yeah. and obviously have, you know, kind of sunshine like that for six weeks in a, in a row is unusual. But as I say, it came early on in the growing s- season, and it actually sped the the germination of the, the the barley up, and then that actually meant that we were um, the barley was uh, ready a bit early, um, which it, in one ter- term wasn't bad, but it meant that uh, you know when the bar- the farmers are harvesting, they're actually getting less yields, and you know it's it's they're they're actually finding that um, because we're having to harvest it a bit early, it still hadn't fully developed, so the nitrogen levels are a bit higher, so. There's less protein, and that actually has an effect on the flavor. Are you guys so, using two row? Two row mainly. We do use six row. Um, I think. Uh, well, as far as I know, we're the only uh, Scotch whiskey distillery in Scotland that is actually making whiskey with six row barley. Yeah. We don't know of any other distillery, and we're working. That's the beer barley that we produce. Sure. But um, mainly two row, um, and. Uh, this year we'll see, like, so 2018 harvest will be interesting because it'll be different from 2017 because so the change in, yeah. yeah, sure. So for us, that's you know telling the story and trying to remember the the, the harvests and see the variations between each one, and that's really what we're doing. We're doing it with Brocladi, we do it with Charlotte, and we actually do it with Octomore as well. So the point three edition of Octomore is always barley growing an Octomore farm, and it's only ever Octomore farm. Sure. It goes into point three. So I actually uh, planned to bring my Octomore bottle and for completely forgot. Yeah, okay. So I grabbed this, yeah. but I'm a huge Octomore fan. Yeah. I mean, the bottle is as uh, unique, iconic in it of itself. Yes. Um, do you guys actually do any? I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Uh, any sherry bombs? Any any major? Uh, I can't think of any. Everything's light and, and black yeah. art. And, that would be yeah. the closest. Well, black art, yeah, is probably something that's really rich and it's not directly driven by sherry mature right. um but we do have some sherry casks maturing we have quite a lot of uh, sherry casks in our cellars but we tend to use um the sherry as a an addition when we're making up a single malt that we'll use a percentage of sherry casks in the blend um in the future we possibly will have there was a, a while where uh we stopped well we weren't buying sherry casks um because you couldn't really guarantee quality uh, sure. sherry cast. Sure. Um, so a lot of easy ways to cut corners. Yeah, with that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think we had... Uh, Not pointing any fingers. Yeah. We had learned... Um, that we we seen a lot of sh- shortcuts getting taken, so we decided not to to fall into a trap and buy some inferior uh, uh, quality casks. So we we stopped buying them. So that means you know when you you're not filling sherry casks, then for you can't obviously. Uh, uh, release a whiskey in, in, in sure. the future so we're but we started buying them because we set up a relationship with um a, a bodega down in jerez uh, fernando de castilla sure and um he's an interesting because he's producing sherry still the original way and um he's huge admiration for what we do um, and we have huge respect for him and we've almost we form a formed a partnership with him where you know we get 
uh, first refusal on, on a lot of casks. Wow. So we buy everything that he has. Um, so in that, he produces uh, Pedro Jimenez, Oloroso, Fino, Manzanilla. So we will buy his casks and we've been laying down some stock. So in the future, we will have sherry cask uh, releases. But at this time, you know, we don't um, <coughs> uh, just because naturally we, we stop filling them for a while. You touched sure. on a point earlier today. You said that there was multiple varieties of barrels, obviously. How many were it? What? Yeah, now? so... Since 2001, we've been very progressive. We talk about being progressive. We've, we, we, you know, exploration yeah, is something yeah. that we've never been frightened to try something. And, you know, I think for us, it's, um, we discovered, um, you know, by putting whiskey into different types of barrels creates new flavors of whiskey. And that's, sure. you know, for us, for a blender, it's an amazing opportunity to go into the warehouse and you've got a huge selection. It's right. like if you're it's a, a good menu. Yeah, like that's barrel right. A and barrel B. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you're a chef and you go into, you know, you've your larder and you've sure. got all these different ingredients, it's amazing. Or if you're a mixologist, the more sure. you've got to play with, the more options you have. And it's exactly the same. And, you know, for us, you know, we weren't just replicating history and saying, well, okay, we'll just fill bourbon and sherry and, We'll keep doing what we can. We'll mix it up and we'll take different, you know. For us, it was going beyond that and working with all the, the varieties we have. And today, we've got over 80,000, well, almost 80,000. We will be, by the end of the year, we'll be over 80,000 casks maturing. And in that 80,000, we've got 300 different variations or almost just <laughs> under 300 different variants of different types of oak we're working with. And um, for us, that's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a playground. You know, you go in and you're, you know, you're, and you're seeing like between Brocladi, Porcharlet, Octomore, all the different variants of wood that are given different flavours. And that helps when we're going to, to make a, a, if we're pulling a whiskey together that we can use, um, whether it's bourbon as a base, and then we'll add to it with, you know, whether it's wine, whether it's sherry, whether it's port. Um, one of the things is difficult for us to and we you know we all we talk about premium French wine, or you know it comes from a region. Uh, a lot of the chateaus don't like us talking about their chateaus, so we can't we can't say the name of the chateau, sure, or, sure. or we're not allowed to non, mark it. Non, uh, what yeah. do they call them? Non uh, the disclosures. Indi- yeah, 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 yeah. NDA, yeah. yeah. It's a big part yeah. of here in uh, yeah. the America as well. Yeah. One so, thing I like about uh, Lafroy, you know, their parent company, they also own makers, and they'll yeah. tell you a lot. A big yeah. portion of the, and that yeah. was my next question to you. A big portion of uh, Lafroig's casks uh, are Maker's Mark. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you? Is there a particular? Even if you can't say it, then yeah. that's fine. Uh, but is there a particular American distiller that you guys pull out of your casks from? Yeah. So we we buy a lot of bourbon casks. Um, probably ninety percent of the casks we buy are, are f- fresh bourbon casks from the states. But we'll buy. We can't guarantee continuity of one distillery. So we buy from. We get some Heaven Hill cask. We get Buffalo Trace. Sure. Great we cast some, to yeah, pull from. We get Beam. Um, Brown and Foreman. Brown Foreman. Yeah, we've had different varieties. We know even laterally there, we can get some Jack Daniels cask mm-hmm. and such. So we do get an option, but we've, you know, in the past, we try to work with um, uh, Buffalo Trace. And sure. it was difficult because they're empty in barrels at different times of the year where we're filling all year round. So we need like a regular supply. Sure. And it's, you know, we couldn't, you know, kind of wait and then till they release then in it. Uh, you know, if they emptied so many barrels, and you know, maybe not enough for us to. I think. <clears throat> I think a lot of people would be very happy or very interested to know that you guys were uh, heavily focused in Buffalo Trace barrels. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I know I, I had a discussion with um, Harlan Williams uh, a couple months back about the amount of product they're producing, and and I've. I still haven't looked this up, but I'm going to repeat the misinformation one more time. Uh, I can't remember if it's a thousand barrels a day or a thousand barrels a week they're filling right now. Yeah. So there, there are so many bourbon distilleries who are amping up uh, filling of casks yeah. to to d- meet yeah. this demand. Yeah. That I don't think you're going to have a hard time. Yeah. Sure. In a few years, yeah. Yeah. pulling for, directly from one distillery or the other. Yeah. Sure. Uh, that's it. But it, it's it's uh, we're talking about this earlier today uh, actually. Um, it's it's uh, filling them was one thing. It's emptying them, so they need to have a market to empty them. And yeah. I think that's where it becomes because they're laying down lots of stock. And I'm not saying you know they're not emptying barrels. They're they are emptying them. But when we try to work with Buffalo Trace in the past to get you know 100 percent supply from them, was that we were getting uh, barrels you know uh, as and when they had them. 
Sure. And as you say, we were then in the middle, we were having to Your demand yeah. outfilled yeah. their need. Well, yeah, it was just they, because we were filling regular and then they were doing empty every so often. Sure. So basically on their demand. And I was explaining like uh, Sherry is a perfect example of that is that because the consumption of Sherry is on the decline, there's not many people drinking. There's not demand yeah. for Sherry. So, um, you know, you find that there's, uh, you know, companies now they're aging sherry, but they're it's they don't just have a market. For yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't have a market for it, so they're trying to use it. They're aging the sherry, but just to get the casks at the end of it to cater for the the whiskey industry. So which is going to jump the price up substantially. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we've seen a big big increase. But as I say, we're lucky. We've got a partnership with. Uh, uh, with the Ant Peterson, and that allows us to, you know, he's as he's aging uh, his sherry, and then when he's he's done with the cast, he lets us know. So we're not too reliant on sherry cast, but um, we are reliant on bourbon cast. So that's why we will work with multiple sure. bourbon uh, suppliers. But you hit all the you hit all the the trigger words. Yeah. I mean, Heaven Hill, Buffalo yeah, Trace. Yeah. These are like the yeah. the people at the forefront of the bourbon boom right now. Yeah. And a lot of uh, it's funny. I would argue that most Scotch drinkers. <clears throat> At least in this market, uh, are also bourbon drinkers. Yeah, but most bourbon drinkers are not Scotch drinkers. That's right. Yeah, and and I think that there are uh, there are a lot of easy crossovers mm-hmm. in yeah. the in the uh, sherry matured or sherry finished. I always try to introduce people to uh, Glen Morangy, Quinta yeah. Rubin, or the Kilhoman line, even if you like a little bit of smoke. But mm-hmm. Glen Fittick has the Bourbon Barrel Reserve, yeah. and there's there's just there's so much out there. It's such an exciting time to be a nerd in this. I mean, you guys, yeah. Yeah. Brook Laddie is doing really well. I mean, I, I used to do a lot with M- Michelle Fedor, mm-hmm. which I, I think she moved on. Mm-hmm. And um, You guys are yeah. are at progressive. You yeah. guys are right there. Yeah, and I think that we're very transparent. We want to educate uh, the people that are drinking our single malt. Um, we want to be able to tell them, mm. you know. We're all- good yeah. <laughs> the um We want to. to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We want to tell people, you know, the everything, all the detail, whether it's from the barley right through to the cast we use, the aging process, uh, the distillation, how we make things, everything, you know, is um, we're an open book, you know. And yeah, if you go to the website, there's yeah. plenty of information. Yeah. Absolutely, and I think you know that's something that we're in this in this era we think we need to be you know open and transparent you know i think there's the the days of smoke and mirrors and saying there's a there's a secret recipe of the blender and you can't tell anybody. that's more of a bourbon yeah, tradition yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Does, no, i love yeah, bourbon yeah. but they've they've been known and they're yeah. moving past that yeah. there's yeah, a whole yeah. the yeah. whole al capone secret recipe yeah. nonsense yeah. is and the great thing about scotch is the story's real. Yeah, that's I right. I mean, yeah. you guys have been around. When was when was uh, uh, Brook Laddie started? So 1881. Yeah, 1881. Yeah. What 1881. were you doing? In 1881. <laughs> <laughs> in 1881. Oh, hmm. Let me think back. Where were you at? Um, <laughs> you know, and and you know, both Lafroy and Lagavulin turned 200 in uh, yeah. 2015, 2016. That's right. Yeah. Just these these hundreds of years yeah. of tradition, and yeah. it really is. Yeah. Tradition, the same. I mean, you guys are still using. Uh, I, I don't know if you still are, but but last I checked, when I first fell in love with you guys, you guys were still using a lot of the same Victorian age, Victorian era equipment that you guys had years past before yep. you guys reopened. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have um, when it's something that we've. Uh, We've been very progressive in the way that we market our product, but I think the way that we produce uh, our product, we've been very respectful of tradition, and that's something that we 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 see ourselves as uh, very unique. And it's not just to be unique; we're doing it. It's actually because we believe it's the right way to be making whiskey. Is that using that Victorian equipment? We've actually rejected any automation or tra- changing the process to implement. You know, if we could make the process more efficient by changing the mash tun or you know adding a new mill, just to, to save a few pounds it's you know it's, it's something we've rejected to do we've, yeah. well, we've refrained from doing it um trying to retain all that victorian equipment um is something that means a lot to us you know we're still working with the original equipment making whiskey in the original way using the skill the tradition that's handed down from generation to generation uh you know we we have to learn our, our craft from the guys before us we, there's no textbook there's no um you know, audio tape. Whiskey that you can 101. Watch it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's no, no YouTube. Yeah, yeah that's it. Uh, yeah. And it's all about touching, feeling, smelling. You know, it's all the kind of basic things that you do. And, you know, I think in this day and age, it's uh, automation takes over so that you start to forget basic things. But at the distillery, that's what's quite warming when you go to the distillery is that there's people there that are actually 
know how what they're actually doing. They're making whiskey. They know they're watching. They're visually seeing everything. They're smelling. They're hearing, just for different sounds. All these things, and you know, that's you know, it's great to try and keep that alive. I think that's part of it. Is we're employing you know Isla in doing so. You know, and sure. not doing Victorian age equipment or anything like that. We're essentially putting people on the ground and all that kind of stuff as well, which is a beautiful part because we're giving back to the island and everything about it. Yeah, everything about it, you know, I, I mentioned <clears throat> it's it's modern, right? It's 2018. But uh, being being there f- feels historic. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. And not even just Brooklady, but being on the island. And then when you get to, I mean, when you land at the airport on the island, <laughs> yeah. it's full of scotch. Yeah, that's right. The, yeah. The, it's the, quite the, an experience. The display cases <laughs> are... Dated uh, at 1881. I mean, <laughs> yes. Yes, the airport definitely feels like it was also started at the same yes. time as the distillery, but... <laughs> But even more so, uh, just just looking at what you guys are doing, it just it screams small town, mm. uh, old world. Yeah, you know, it's a different just, world. Yeah, but I think when you go to Isla, you realize that time slows down. You know, everybody's. Uh, um, are you allowed it? to smoke indoors? Yeah, well, no, no, yeah. that's yeah. yeah that, that, caught that's definitely you caught up with that. Yeah, 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 that. Yeah. But the um, I think you know when you realise the pace of life in Ireland, there's no rush, there's no tra- you know there's no traffic lights, there's no um, you know, and I think people have got time, still got time to stop and talk and you know have you know a conversation, and you know, that's what makes Isla quite a special place. You know, that's why I've lived there all my life. I don't think I've ever had the urge to move away or felt that. You know, sure. I've had enough of this. You know, I want to, to leave. Um, I think uh, we've the the population of Isla is three thousand people. Three thousand. Three thousand yeah. people. Wow. And Thirty six thousand uh, sheep, yeah, though. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. lots of sheep. Yeah. If we weren't distilling, yeah. we'd be a yeah. petting zoo. Essentially, yeah. that's one thing I love about the distilleries. There is, I got to pick up so many great scarves. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. All from wool mills yeah. on the island, yeah. Yeah. and it was just, it was just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. There's a great respect for like local produce, and you know, working in uh, like you know, with, you know, the the woolen mill who are you know using the the, the wool from the local sheep, and they're creating uh, scarves and merchandise for the distilleries and. It's great, you know, the, the, the visitors we get from all over the world, um, you know, we're very grateful that the efforts that people will, will make to come from all corners of the world to come to visit Isla, it's, 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 it's incredible, you know, it's, it's heartwarming to see. And, you know, it's great that they can be rewarded with little kind of gifts that they can take back. Mm-hmm. Do, do they have any kind of idea or metric on how many people visit during the uh, Fishila Festival? Am I yeah. pronouncing that right? Yeah, Fishila? the Fishila, fe- 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 yeah. Fishila? Man, yeah. I was so <laughs> dead set on pronouncing everything right this episode. <laughs> yeah. Fishila. Fishila, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the Fish runs, yeah, at the end of May every year. It's our annual whiskey festival. Sure. Uh, each distillery has its own day. And you know, they always we we joke locally about you know one of these days the island's going to like cope over because there's that many people come on, <laughs> you know, and it's <laughs> yeah. going to sink. Uh, so yeah, they, it, it's known to almost double. Or you know, and, and you know, we see we have our open day, we get between two and a half to three thousand visitors on the day, uh, on, on one day. Like uh, so the the entire island's population. Yeah. Essentially, in numbers, yeah. doubles yeah. Yeah. for that one day. Yeah, well, for so, the week, uh, yeah, right? Much, yeah, right. Yeah, so, yeah. for those who don't know, it's a jazz festival on the island that happens where you know I believe there are eight distilleries. Yep. Yep. Eight soon distilleries nine, on the yeah. island. Yeah. Yep. Soon but, to be nine. And then even after that, there's yeah. I think there's, there's scheduled a couple for more, a couple yeah, more two, coming. Yeah. 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 But it, every day of that week, you just hop around festival. It's like a bar. It's like a bar crawl. Yeah. A pub crawl. Yeah. But you just spend the day, and then each distillery does special releases for the event. And uh, I didn't. I we went when we went. We went in the fall. Yeah. And I'm committed for our next trip when we go to be during fish. Fish, yeah, that's yeah, because right. it was just incredible. Yeah. Just uh, yeah, well, it's not just uh, jazz. I mean, it's it's what they call the the festival of music and malt. And so we bring over bands, live bands, and they'll play. And that could be Scottish music, uh, folk music, to jazz, to different um, bands that will play music. And the distilleries put on different events during the day, tastings and educational tastings. And, you know, we just really have a big party on the on the Sunday. It's our open day, and we invite some locals along. Uh, we have cocktails going. There's... Um, uh, we have we bring in maybe three or four different bands and they're playing live music and there's Highland dancing there's local artists that will come and sing and yeah it's really a, a it's a party um, but it's a celebration as well of you know for you know to celebrate all the people that have come you know to the island to have a, a bit of a, a good day and you know have a bit of a party and yeah it's a it's a, it's a great experience um, you know and people 
uh, will come uh, from all over the world to that festival. You know, we get uh, people from all nationalities. Yeah, it's uh, it, it, absolutely. Uh, we, we went to Portela and we stopped at Lagavulin and um, L- Lane MacArthur, I- Ian MacArthur, Ian MacArthur. Ian MacArthur, yeah, MacArthur yeah. He, uh, he he pulled out uh, a bottling from the year because I know that yeah. that. Speaking of the secondary market, yeah. one of the big things that happens is during that festival, all those bottles, uh, a, a ton of them show yeah, up sure. on those secondary markets, yeah. right? The, yeah, the auction that's... houses and stuff. And it's one thing. I, we ended up grabbing a bottle of the Lagavulin one year, I think 20, mm. 2016. Um, but it's one of those things that I've I've touched every part of it except actually being there during it. So yeah. um, it's it's definitely the ultimate goal if you're an Isla fan to go visit uh, during F- Feshila. Yeah. Well done. Uh, yeah, I got it that time. Put it on the um, calendars, guys. Are we going over for a break? Or? Yeah, yeah. Well, we actually we went over for the break. Uh, he just said, "Keep going. Yeah. We'll just we'll just keep going. We'll leave this part in too." So great. it's uh, we're we're very professional here. <laughs> yeah. People love it. Just the the great thing about podcasts nowadays is just people love an honest conversation. Yeah, sure. You know, not just the local cut. news yeah. cut. Yeah. You know, yeah. the it's fake, authentic, fake yeah. hair, veneer teeth. You know. Yeah. Well, it yeah, it's exactly the same as the whiskey. You know, we we see we want. You know, we are authentic and we want to be authentic. You know, we're that's why we're being real. You know, and it's you know rather than trying to cut it and be an image. Of something or not, I think it's really yeah. you know, it's important just to. It, it, there's a there's a reason why um, you know podcasts nowadays are going through uh, the golden era of podcast. I mean, yeah. if you listen, Joe Rogan sees something like 15 million a month. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In in all of his episodes, and it's just it's something that uh, people prefer. It's like when cable came out, right? Yeah. You couldn't say and see. I could say shit right now. Yeah. When when back in the day, you couldn't say you couldn't cuss on regular TV, yeah. and then when cable came out, people were like, "Cable's great." Yeah. Let's, yeah. You know MTV, right? Yeah. Um, the the whole podcast realm, being able to just have an honest conversation. I've had uh, 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 Fred No from Beam here. Sure. Um, uh, we, we've just we've had all kinds of people. Glenn Morgie will be here next week. Yeah. So it and my first love being Scotch. Um, You're having a good week. I'm having a week very and a good, good week and I'm a half. Having a very good. Well, <laughs> you know the great thing about Wow, right? Yeah. So the what happens next week? Whiskeys of the world will be here in Houston, and it's a, it's a similar festival to what I throw the Houston Whiskey Social, uh, but everyone's in town, so mm-hmm. yeah. everyone's like, "Hey, can we get on the show?" I'm like, "Yes, yeah. please!" Like yeah. a big thing that's going through. Uh, uh, a very popular phase right now is Indian whiskey. Okay, yeah. And Amrut yeah, will be Amrut, on the show yeah, next yeah. year, so oh, or awesome. next month or yeah. next week. So I'm super excited to have Amrut on. Great. Uh, and then Glen Morangy. I mean, yeah. Who's what's not yeah, to love about Glen yeah, yeah. So great whiskeys, yeah. Um, so what's give me the super secret next special release that you haven't told anybody about yet? Uh, super. Well, I mean, we've um, there's there, we've Putting always the spot. we've got yeah, always got few. lots of things up our sleeve. Um, you talk about grain. Yeah, so I was actually just contemplating yeah, t- uh, telling you about um, a, a project we're working on. Um, so, um, is it called Brooklady Grain? No. Well, we're, we're Maybe. hoping it's not going to be. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're fighting against uh, it. Yeah. 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 So we um, last year. Um, we well, it started the year before. We were looking at you know, th- we're always being creative with barley and different strains of barley and different things. And to say growing it in Isla, it's got to be something that's connected to the land and sure. you know, the place. And for us, uh, we thought you know what can we do that's different. And we thought well you know, um, Americans are making great single malt and they're using barley and you know ju- they're making it in Japan. So why you know, can't we do yeah, something else? Yeah, why can't we do something else? <laughs> so we thought, well, we'll do what they do in America. We'll make rye whiskey. So oh, so we grew some rye on Isla. Uh, last Whoa. year, so so we uh, that's big, yeah, mm-hmm. it and, it's really big. Yeah. I don't know if any yeah. scotch producer yeah. just producing a rye. Yeah, well, uh, coincidentally, so we we done it. Uh, we we got it. We started. We worked with one of the local farmers that grows barley for us, so and we we, yeah. we got um we got some seeds, and uh, we got him to to grow it, and we kept it quite low key because we didn't want to get excite anybody that. Because we knew that it's going to be a first. It's going to be a very big and first. We didn't know that because rye is going through a bit of a resurgence now yeah. in the states as well. Yeah, bourbon's huge, but during prohibition, rye was yeah. the thing, yeah. right? Yeah, because before bourbon really got uh, defined by law, uh, you can snake yeah. oil salesmen will put all kinds yeah. of mess in there. Did you get that? Yep. Sorry. Um, <laughs> rye was like the the thing and yeah. some old uh there's a, a local guy a few local guys that have a really great collection of prohibition era rye yeah mm-hmm. that is just phenomenal old overholt from yes. 1915 or yeah. i've had a few from 1930 was just in, uh, great whiskey yeah 
I mean, whiskey incarnate. Yeah. So it, it nowadays, uh, you know, Kentucky Owl Rye and all these different uh, – Russell's Reserve Rye is some of the best rye in America that you can get. And it's definitely making a comeback. So yeah. to hear that a yeah. Scottish producer. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So I was going to say it was coincidentally that on the week that we mashed and distilled the rye, there was another distillery on the East Coast. It's a new distillery, Inchdairn. They've just started up um, and they actually made a couple of mashes with rye as well the same week. Um, and they but they're not out yet, right? Yeah. So it's not no. been released. And either of ours, ours is almost just a year old now at the moment. It's still aging. Um we so we distilled it uh super excited that we we done it certainly for the first time in isla that you know growing rye and uh, for us it was a first uh to create a new spirit in the same distillery again with just a different cereal so we we filled um the spirit into a combination of we've got some virgin american oak uh, that we filled it into with a medium and a high toast and then we've actually taken some French virgin oak and we filled it into that as well, just to see the, the limousine oak. Uh, the difference. Yeah, with high toast. And then we filled some into fresh bourbon casks again. And we'll just watch it age and see how it goes. But, I mean, the results uh, under a year is, is incredible. They're, they're, you know, it's it's, it's amazing liquid. Uh, we're, we're super excited about that. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it progresses and, you know, see where the market, if it takes it off into the market. Yeah, we're, we're, we're quite excited about that. So what what's the goal? Are we talking four or five years from now? Or well, well who knows? You know, I think, we're, the, you know, we'll let the liquid decide when it's ready, it's ready. And I think, and, you know, we're excited. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's shaping up to be pretty good so early on uh, sure. because you know the the the, the progression in uh, it's having in in uh, new new oak is, is 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 quite intense so we're seeing the influence from the cask is um is quite rapid but we'll see you know we'll 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 watch and see what happens sure uh the fistful of bourbon glenfiddich just re- william grant just yep. released uh, their blend of american bourbon aged yep. here so the idea of a Scottish producer growing yeah. ra- growing right there? Yeah, we grew yeah. it on Isla, uh, and we mashed it, and we distilled it uh, all at the distillery. All done there, yeah, all and done. then aged in American oak. Yeah. So it's a real yeah. ode yeah. to American yeah. whiskey. Yeah. Uh, that's incredible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we're super excited about that. Um, and, well, when you talked about, you know, will it be Brickladdy Grain, um, we've had lots of ideas or suggestions for names, you know, the people saying Ryla and all sorts of things. But Ryla. We, yeah, <laughs> we've not um, got to that stage yet. But one thing that we're, we're – um, we want to kind of challenge um, because at the moment, if you make a single malt whiskey, you you know you've got to use malted barley and sure. the, the Scotch whiskey. That's defined. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. defined. Well, rye is not defined. No, rye yeah. isn't. So sing, you can't call it single dry or uh, so. That's at the moment, the regulations would stipulate that you would call it single, uh, single grain. grain. But wait, I mean, yeah. wait. I'm sorry. Just so I understand, you have to. You can't call it something that hasn't been defined. Well, the the regulations say if you use any other cereal rather than malted barley, it falls all into this big one category of single grain. Sure. So, I mean, we feel that's quite boring because it's <laughs> sure. um, it's not actually defining the cereal you're using. It's you you're know, using it's, Cheerios. Yeah, it's fine. We know. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, it. yeah. So it's something that over the next few years we want to kind of challenge and you know see if we you know we can get that rule overturned because um, you know it's not we're we're not just making it for. For, we're not making a green whiskey that's going to go into a blend. We're making it because we want to bring it to the market. Correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes, but that'll be a fight we'll have for the next few years. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we are out of time. That was all four? Yeah? That was perfect. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Cheers, guys. yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Ding, 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 ding. ding. Cheers.